It's dubbed to be one of their most advanced stethoscopes yet with up to 40 times amplification plus active noise cancellation. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Littman Digital Core Stethoscope. I had so many requests from you guys asking me to take a look at the Littman Core Digital Stethoscope. And I thought to myself, well, if this stethoscope is so popular, I need to get my hands on one. And that is what I did. I managed to get my hands on the stethoscope and use it for a couple of weeks at work as a real life doctor. And this helped me to kind of get an idea as to what it was like, what its irks are, what its pros are, and whether or not it actually is worth your money. First up, let's talk about the features that the stethoscope actually offers you. On paper, these sound really quite impressive. For example, it has up to 40 times amplification of sounds. Now, from my previous video, you'll note that I had the Bluetooth Litman stethoscope, which also increased the sounds, but up to 24 times. So this is like almost double that, which is impressive, right? We'll soon find out. It also has the ability to switch from um, analog to digital. So you can kind of still use your analog stethoscope like this one over here, but then with a the toggle button, you can actually go into the digital version and increase the sound. Not only that, but it also has active noise cancellation, which means that it's great because when you put your stethoscopes in, you won't be able to hear anything around you. And probably one of the more impressive features that the stethoscope has is that they've linked it up with an app called the Echo app. And what this does is it allows you to record those sounds, allows you to annotate those sounds, and even allows you to, with a subscription, to detect if there are any murmurs in that sound as well. So that means that you could save it onto your phone and then automatically with a monthly subscription, it'll tell you if there is a murmur that has been detected all sounds too good to be true. So what I think of it in real life. Now, as I said, I've got my hands on this for about a week or two at work. And let's talk about the aesthetics first of all. As you can see, it's a pretty sleek looking stethoscope. It's pure black and you can get variations of the stethoscope. You can change the chest piece, um, which can either be uh, gold or silver or chrome, but the predominant tubing of the stethoscope will always be black. Now for me, as someone who likes pink, that is a bit of a, a downer for me, but it does look really sleek and sophisticated. In saying that, as it does have its main electronical piece at, towards the end of the stethoscope, it does make the stethoscope a little bit heavier. Now, this obviously is important because you need to have the battery in there, you need to be able to switch your toggles, and you also have the controls to increase your sound and decrease the sound as well. So this is something that you just can't get past, but it does make it a little bit more heavier than, say, your traditional stethoscope, which has got none of the annexes or appendixes towards the end of the stethoscope. The Lumen Classic 3 is ever so slightly taller or longer than the core, as you can see. The core is definitely heavier because it has got a battery inside it. It does also come with a USB port as well that you can plug it into charge. And of course, it's got your bell and diaphragm turns as well. So one interesting thing is that this is actually my colleague's stethoscope and I noticed that he doesn't ever take it home. He always leaves it on the bench top. And is that because it's just too heavy? maybe, who knows? But for me personally, I did find it quite heavy and certainly you probably wouldn't want to put it around your head a lot of the time because it can make you feel a bit weighed down. So moving on from the super sleek black design, you come up to the earpieces. Now on the website, it does say that the earpieces are super comfortable and it allows you to have active noise cancellation once the digital aspect is turned on for the stethoscope. Now, when I first put these in my ears, I have to say everybody is different, but personally, when I put them in my ears, they were really hard. They felt so hard for my ears and I didn't find them very comfortable. I then switched over to my regular stethoscope, which I found that the earpieces were a lot softer. And so I thought to myself, well, maybe this is just me. I'm not used to it. But over a period of time, and I used the stethoscope probably for about a week or two, I found those earpieces were just really too hard for my ears. Now, obviously I'm being really pedantic and you can probably change the earpieces around to say something that suits you better, but out of the box, they were not particularly comfortable. Moving on to the sound of the stethoscope, I compared this with my Littman Classic 3, which is what I use on my day-to-day -day practice as a general practitioner. Out of the box, I used the Core Digital Stethoscope with just this analog version, and I compared it with my Litman Classic 3, obviously, which doesn't have any Bluetooth uh, apparatus in it. So I'm gonna switch it off for a second because I want to compare analog to analog versus my Litman Classic 3 and the Core, and just see how they both compare. So let's just use my Classic 3 for now. Pop it in my ears using the diaphragm. I'm just gonna take a listen to my heart sounds. Yep, I can hear the heart. It is a quieter noise, but I can hear it. There's not a lot of interference. So I'm excited to see how the core does perform. So just with the analog version, let's pop it on. It's very, very similar to the Littman Classic 3, but I have to say it is actually quieter on the analog version compared to this analog version. Um, so this is quieter with just analog version versus my Litman Classic 3. 
And I have to say that I was a little bit disappointed when I listened to the analog version of the core stethoscope. Why was this? Well, because the core stethoscope really sounded much quieter than my Litman Classic 3. I couldn't really hear the heart sounds all that clearly. There was a lot of extra muffled noises. And I think it was just the quietness of it that made me want to not use the analog version of the core stethoscope. But in saying that, if you're going to buy a digital stethoscope, why would you use the analog version anyway? Surely you'd be just getting a regular stethoscope if you want to go for an analog option. So it makes sense that perhaps Lippmann didn't make it super loud because it encourages you to use the digital aspect of the stethoscope instead. So then we toggle on to the digital component of the stethoscope. Now, when I first used it, it did take a little bit of getting used to, I have to say. Like anybody probably would do, I cranked it right up to the top as 40 amplification and I put the stethoscope on my heart and I tried to take a listen. And quite frankly, there was a lot of added noise. Yes, the noise cancellation was there. I couldn't really hear anything around me. However, when I placed the stethoscope onto my chest and took a listen, it was really there was a lot of added sounds and that can sometimes happen if, for example, there's some crinkling, if you're moving your fingers a little bit or if there's a little bit of movement in the person, if they're moving their body or if, even if they're breathing, you do get some added noises. I did find a nice happy medium whereby I increased the volume to about halfway whereby it gave me a nice crisp sound of the heart sounds, but with little to no added noises. Now, this became really quite enjoyable and I could really hear the heart sounds really clearly and everything just was so beautiful. So it does have a pro in that if you do manage to get a, a nice balance, you can actually hear the heart sounds really clearly without any added noises compared to say an analog stethoscope. One thing that did happen a few times during my testing of the stethoscope is that I did accidentally press the toggle button a few times while auscultating the patient. Now this could be because I'm just not used to it or it could have been that it's just in the way. And certainly when you are moving the stethoscope from one valve placement to another and your hand placement is over the toggle, it's really easy to press over the toggle. And so this did become a bit of a shock when I was listening to the patient's heart and then suddenly it would go from really loud to really quiet and really loud to really quiet. And so yeah, I learned my lesson really quickly to keep my hand away from the toggle button because yeah, otherwise you get into situations whereby you're going from digital to analog and you just can't simply hear it very well. Another great feature of the stethoscope is that it does allow you to listen to both paediatric hearts and adult hearts as well. It has a tunable chest piece, which makes it really simple for you um, to turn the head and to listen to those heart sounds in different frequencies as well. So this really is with any other stethoscope anyway with Littmann because all of them do have a tunable uh, chest piece, which allows you to turn from the bell to the diaphragm. So I guess that's not a super important feature because most of stethoscopes actually do this, but it is a nice added feature nonetheless. Now, one other feature that it does offer is that you can actually plug in some headphones into the stethoscope. And if you've got a friend, for example, you're studying with, you can both take a listen to those heart sounds together, which is cool if you're studying or if you're learning something, but certainly as a general practitioner, I probably will never, never, yeah, never use this feature. It's really unlikely for me to use this feature, but nonetheless, it, it exists and it could be useful for anybody out there who is training, for example. Okay, so let's move on to the app that is associated with the stethoscope. Now, you can download this app, it's called the Echo app, and it is free to download, but it does have a subscription model to it, so that if you wanted to pay a monthly fee, for example, you can download your sounds that you record on your stethoscope onto the application, and it will tell you in a matter of moments if they have detected a murmur. But more about this in a moment. So using the app is fairly straightforward. You download it onto your mobile device, you turn on Bluetooth, and you pair it with your core digital stethoscope. Now, this process is really simple, and it doesn't necessarily need you to have the same telephone to pair it onto your mobile device. So say, for example, I was using my iPad one day, I could still pair it onto my stethoscope, which is kind of cool because um, it allows for interflexibility with different uh, mobile devices. And so once you've set it up, you can literally just start listening to your heart sounds on the mobile device. So the way that you do this is you turn the stethoscope on, place it onto the patient's chest, and you can actually start recording the heart sounds live. And it, moreover than that, you can even listen to the heart sounds on your mobile device whilst you're listening on the chest as well. This I didn't realize, and it became a little bit confusing why I could hear this heart sounds, but I could also hear an echo in the background. It was because I had the mobile device on, so it was playing the heart sounds whilst I was listening as well. Now this could be kind of useful, I guess, if for example, you've got a patient who's intrigued and wants to know what their heart sounds like, so you could listen to their heart and then get them to listen to the heart sounds from the application as well. So that was kind of funky, I suppose. But 
as a person who was using the stethoscope at the time, it was very confusing and there was a lot of echoey reverberations. And so I wouldn't recommend it if you are listening real time. But the app does allow you to record those sounds. If you didn't have the opportunity to share with a patient there and then, you can record their heart sounds and show them uh, at a later stage. And the recordings are automatically capped at 15 seconds. You can make it longer if you want to, but I felt that 15 seconds was probably long enough. You can then annotate your recordings according to the patient name or what you've listened to. But I think probably something to bear in mind is that there is a patient confidentiality issue. And if you are putting patient details into your mobile device, maybe that's not ideal. You can then obviously play those recordings back and you can share it with your friends, with your colleagues, with your patient if you need to, and you can delete them as well. One feature that I couldn't find on the app that looked like it was there in the past was the share functionality. I was trying to save my heart sounds onto my device so that I could show you guys. However, there was no share function. And so I don't know what's happened there whether Echo have actually deleted that function, but you can no longer share those recordings onto your desktop device, for example, your computer, nor can you save it onto your gallery, which kind of made it a bit annoying. So what I had to do instead was screen record my recording and save it that way, which for me just seems like a really big loop for just an easy button just to press share. One of the other impressive features of the app is that you can actually subscribe to an AI detector, which tells you whether or not they have detected a murmur in your heart sounds. Now, word of caution with this. Now, this technology isn't new. It has been around for a quite a long time. Let's take a look at the ECG, for example. ECG machines have been around for many, many, many years. And when you do an ECG tracing, the ECG will tell you whether or not in the top right of the box, it will tell you whether or not there's any issues that have been identified. It may tell you or give you a hint if a patient's had a heart attack or if they've got a bundle branch block and so on and so forth. However, as medical students, we were always trained never to truly trust the blurb at the top right of the ECG machine because it would sometimes be inaccurate. In fact, most of the time it would be inaccurate. So you'd only use it as a guidance. And so that's why we were trained as doctors actually read the ECG to make sure that we make our own interpretation rather than rely on the AI device. Same could be said about this application. Obviously it's an AI, it's not perfect. So I wouldn't take it to heart if it does tell you that the patient's got a murmur. Make sure that you are just checking that if you're not sure yourself, check it yourself with a colleague or a cardiac doctor, a heart doctor, and make sure that it is actually a true diagnosis because the worst thing you'd want is to rely on the AI machine that tells you the patient's got, I don't know, an injection systolic murmur and it ends up actually being normal. So that would be kind of embarrassing. So word of caution with the AI, until it kind of progresses and gets better, probably just still rely on your own brain and your colleagues around you who may be more skilled in detecting murmurs. So what are my conclusions about the stethoscope? Well, certainly it is a really cool stethoscope. It has so many cool features that can be used, for example, if you're training, if you're in cardiology, if you're a medical student. But for me, as a general practitioner who's fairly time poor, I probably won't use half, if not most of these features. For example, with the mobile app, I do like the idea of it. It was fun just trying it on myself, listening to my own heart sounds, recording those. But in reality, when you've got like a 10 to 15 minute consultation with your patient who comes in usually with a shopping list of things. Will I whip out my mobile phone to record their heart sounds and show it with them? Probably not so much. I do like the idea of it. I mean, certainly if I had a patient who had a really interesting uh, heart murmur and I, I felt that, you know, it was reasonable for me to record that and share it with them, then perhaps I would do that. But I don't necessarily think this would be a common thing in my daily practice. And as I found from uh, using this stethoscope, I didn't really take out my phone at all. Um, there's also something about using your phone when you're in a consultation. I have to say, um, maybe I'm just old school, but I, I really find that if I use my phone during my consultation, I feel like I'm taking my attention away from the patient and I feel like I'm being a bit rude as well. So probably the phone and the application is a no-no from me, unless I'm just having fun with myself, or with my friends, and I just want to share some heart sounds. But it may be useful if you are a medical student, if you're training and you are, you've learned some really cool pathology on the ward rounds, you want to listen to it and you want to use that as a revision later, obviously getting the patient's consent. Or if you're a cardiologist in training and you want to listen to those heart sounds later on, again, I think those would be really interesting or useful use cases to use the application and to record the sounds. Or certainly if you've got a thing for listening to heart sounds, then, you know, recording it onto your mobile device is, is a really good way of, of keeping and treasuring those heart sounds as well. But on a day-to-day -day practice, I probably wouldn't use that feature too much. With regards to the actual sound of the stethoscope, now this is probably something that I did find quite impressive. Um, I did really enjoy listening to the stethoscope when it was slightly amplified, not so much the 40 times amplification, but probably in that sort of 15, 20 times. Um, it was much crisper and clearer than my Lippmann Classic 3 which is kind of sad because I do love my Lippmann Classic 3, as you guys all know, but certainly it was useful for that respect. 
One thing I probably struggled with that maybe you guys won't was that toggling just accidentally uh, in between auscultating heart sounds was a bit of an issue, but I guess with repeated use, you can probably just get used to that. And I suppose the only other thing is that the battery, now when I used it, the battery was perfectly fine. There was no issues. Obviously everything does have a runtime and it will eventually need charging up. And that may catch you a little bit short because if you are listening to a patient and then suddenly the battery runs out, then you're stuck with their analog version. And quite frankly, the analog version, it just isn't as good as your traditional stethoscopes. So would I buy one of these? Well, they are really costly, I have to say. They are at upwards of $700 um, for a stethoscope. I think in the grand scheme of things, if I weighed up the pros and the cons, um, the fact that I probably wouldn't use a lot of the features for it in terms of the mobile device, um, the only feature that I might use would be the amplification. But I have to say, I'm not sure I can fully justify that expense just yet. Perhaps if I was a little bit harder of hearing or if I was working in a really noisy environment, for example, a ward round or a, um, a nursing home where I had to listen and there's lots of noise around me, I probably would invest in the stethoscope. But in a general practice whereby it's usually just myself and the patient, perhaps one other member of family, it's usually quite a quiet setting. And so I probably could just get away with using my analog stethoscope. However, it does have its merits and I can certainly see it being useful for uh, medical students, for cardiologists, for, for doctors who are working in busy ward rounds, for example, then this might be something for you guys to consider. I hope you guys have found this video useful and of course let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Would you buy one? Hmm, I can't wait to hear from you. I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.